Hey, good morning. This is John. Another uh, magnificent day here, upstate New York. I, I just can't believe it. This weather is really unusual. I've never seen November weather looking like this. Check this out. This is what. I mean, this sky, the sun, is just magnificent. These were uh, these were soybean over the summer. They grow soybean, and they alternate soybean, corn, corn, soybean. They do a lot of soybeans up here. Think a theme? It's soybeans. <laughs> Um, so I woke this morning feeling, uh, powerful, good power, you know, personal power, internal power, purpose, focus, wisdom, feeling, um, above it all. Yeah. That's a good one above it all. I felt above the battleground. What a great spot to be. And it sure is a battleground. And it makes a stark distinction between force and power. I've stopped watching the news except a quick hit here and there to see who's lying the most. <laughs> because I recognized I'm watching force versus power. The people who uh, seem to be addicted to force, especially uh, leadership in leadership roles in our country, are lost. They're lost. They're lost in their struggle, not for power. We keep misusing that word. We should really get used to using its correct definition. They're lost in, the, in a struggle, in a forceful struggle. Power is being able to stand back and say, I claim this and I refuse to get drawn into your forceful struggle. I refuse. I'm too powerful for that. Bob Marley had a great line and I just love it. I don't know if, if it was an original, but the way he says it in his great poetic Jamaican way, I heard him once and he has said it with real passion, almost anger. He said, everybody talking about wanting to fall in love, fall in love. What are you talking about? I don't want to fall in anything. I want to stand in it. And I remember thinking, wow, how brilliant. Falling in love, you know, seems like such a romantic, great, oh, I can't live without you. I, I can't, I can't be a moment away from you. That's a loss of power, in my opinion. It's like when people get married. Someone asked me once, when are you going to settle down? I thought, are you listening to yourself? Settle down. Listen to the words you're using. Listen to how they drain your power. Settle, compromise, down, decline. I'm going to settle and decline? No, I'm going to ante up. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ante up. If anything, this experience that we're all going through has really provided contrast for force versus power. I watch, I watch these, I can't even call them politicians anymore, lost children struggling, forcefully struggling against each other, us against you, me against them. Nothing, nothing is ever gained at the loss of another. Nothing. Maybe in the world, but in essence, nothing is ever gained at the loss of another. Back to the principle that the only thing that increases as you give it away are ideas. 
in thermodynamics, one of the laws of thermodynamics is called syntropy, which is chaos into order. Then there's entropy, which is order into chaos. In the physical world, this is an entropic system. Everything you see in form, even our beautiful sun, all of it will one day decay, be gone. Even that, our beautiful sun, our beautiful planet, one day all of this will be gone. That's entropy. Syntropy is the opposite. Syntropy is the world of spirit. It, it literally contradicts, goes against, defies the world of physical, of the physical realm. And that's the world of, of the miracle. So during this challenging time, you can stay in your force-based mind, which is, I like to call it, your wrong mind. Or you can, which is an entropic system, trying to force things to happen, trying to make things. I'm going to take this, I'm going to do that. And there's a winner, there's a loser. That's an entropic system. I'm going to stay miracle-minded. Or the right-minded way to look at this. I'll give you a perfect example. There's a line from the Bible which says, I believe it's from the New Testament. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Now, if you read that from an entropic or wrong-minded pers perspective, it would imply that there is a divine presence, a deity, a God, if you will, over watching over us. And um, he's coming, you know. He's going to come at you with vengeance. But if you look at it from a miracle-minded perspective, if you look at it right-minded, using that principle I was just talking about, basically what it infers is there's a kind, loving presence which knows that the only thing that increases as you give it away are ideas. So this presence knows that the idea of vengeance, if you give it away, is going to hurt you and it's going to cause an entropic result. It's going to de devolve into, entrop in, into entropy. So what that presence is saying is, Lord is saying, that's my idea. I'm not allowing you to use it, or I shouldn't say not allowing you. I'm going to hold that idea. Please don't use it because you'll hurt yourself. You do have free will. You can use it. But look at the results. Does it serve you? Does it serve a greater good? No. Vengeance is mine. Let me hold on to it. Because I know what it can do. And I don't think you're ready to understand what it can do. And you don't have the instructions yet. We're getting them, but you don't have them yet. So, Bob, I'm standing in love. I'm not going to fall into it. I'm standing in my power. I'm not going to force things today. Or if I feel myself forcing, I'm going to go back into my right mind. And I'm going to stop as quickly as possible. Maybe it's not going to last long. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, while it's here, I'm sure glad to be standing in its rays. And I'm sure grateful to Mother Earth for this beauty. And for to choose between a miracle and murder above the battleground. And who, with the love of God upholding them, could find the choice between murder or miracles? Hard to make.